Imagine that you are going to a party, but you're the first person to reach there. Now, what's the benefit of reaching before anyone else? Well, if you reach to a party early, then you have all the food items lined up and you can choose whatever you want. But if you are late to the party, then you have to consume whatever is limited options are available. Correct? Exactly the same thing happens when you do not follow biotech research. If you are a biotech professional, and if you are late to the party, then someone else has taken over and he won the game and you will keep looking at him thinking, how did he become a billionaire? How did she become a billionaire? The truth is, you can become a billionaire if you are following biotech trends closely and if you are not late to the party. Today's video is about disease biology. Latest in 2024, whatever has happened in disease biology and we're going to track more than, I think, 12 or 13 new developments and of course I'll tell you the previous year's developments and what new has come up this year but in the meanwhile these 13 or 14 are just the tip of the iceberg you should know that there is much much more which is happening so if, if you're not subscribed to Biotechnica's YouTube channel please do that because that is where all the latest from biotechnology comes up so let's start with today's topic which is biotech's race to cure for uh, disease and that is disease biology. Today we are first talking about uh, the latest in CRISPR. So we are seeing that Vertex Pharmaceuticals has developed a first of its kind gene editing treatment, a CRISPR cure for sickle cell disease. Now this groundbreaking therapy involves a hospital stay, bone marrow removal, removal, cell editing and transplantation back into the patient and the expected price tag was very high, uh, ranging from 2 to 3 million. But after the injection of this new technology, which is called as CRISPR, it has become even more cheaper. And that means for sickle cell an uh, anemia, we have hope. Now, followed by that, we uh, let me update you on what happened in 2023 in CRISPR. So we had CASGAVI, which is a milestone for CRISPR-Cas9 treatment. Now, in 2023, we witnessed the significant achievement with approval of CASGAVI, which is the first CRISPR-Cas9 edited uh, cell therapy. And this gene therapy marks a pivotal moment in the field paving the way for more advanced genetic treatment. So it has been approved by uh, FDA. Now, we also saw clinical research uh, happening more for these uh, target uh, rare diseases and uh, more uh, technological advances such as gene editing is now being incorporated. And in fact, in UK recently, we saw the approval of first CRISPR treatment for conditions such as sickle cell anemia, offering uh, hope to patients with these rare and debilitating disorders. Now, followed by that, we have the next update for you which is from Alzheimer's. Now, we all know Alzheimer is really bad disease. It debilitates the person concerned and that is why uh, companies are racing against time to create a cure for Alzheimer's. So the latest what we have is in the year of 2023, marked a significant milestone in Alzheimer's research with full approval of EZI and Biogen's amyloid fighting antibody Likamabi. Now, these disease-modifying drugs represent a promising step forward in the treatment of Alzheimer uh, diseases, offering hope to patients and families. Now, followed by that, we have seen more uh, and more research now happening in 2024 because 2023, we saw uh, approval and that bring, brought in more energy towards uh, the research of, for, for Alzheimer's and we are seeing more uh, papers getting published against this disease and the worldwide collaboration is happening as we speak. So, Alzheimer research collaboration is on its way. The third innovation which we are seeing, third news which we are tracking today is oncology research. There are promising pipelines from biotech firms like Biogene, Tango Therapeutics and Allogene Therapeutics. And uh, they are leading the charge with promising pipelines and innovative ca cancer treatments. And uh, their cutting edge research uh, and developmental efforts are fueling hope for more effective and targeted therapies. Followed by that, we also saw um, oncology as a lucrative market for big pharma. Uh, more investor interest is coming into the oncology market given that more people are getting uh, cancer nowadays. And this reflects the urgent need for new and improved cancer treatments. And as the biotech industry continues to do research in this direction, a potential for this life-threatening disease is definitely on the rocks. Now, followed with that, we are also seeing personalized approaches towards various rare diseases and including cancer. So the future of cancer treatment is obviously going to be personalized medicine. We have always spoken about it in our channel. And advancements, advancements such as uh, genomics, immunotherapy and targeted therapies are paving the way for more precise and effective uh, treatments offering hope for better outcomes and improved quality of life 
for patients. Now, followed by that, the third and most interesting development of 2024 has been obviously AI in drug discovery. Now, disease biology at search is, we can say it is getting revolutionized with AI because uh, the AI-based strategy is little different than other strategies. Other strategies are wet lab strategies. The AI strategy is totally into bioinformatics and machine learning. So we basically learn and then we implement. That's how the machines are working. An AI-based strategy has been developed to speed up the discovery of new drug candidates for serious diseases such as Parkinson's and cancer. Now, this approach has shown, shown promise in identifying potential uh, treatment for Parkinson's disease, demonstrating uh, significant improvement actually over traditional methods. Now, AI is also helping us screen effectively, but better screening by leveraging the power of machine learning. Researchers are able to rapidly screen libraries of compounds and identifying promising candidates more effic efficiently, more effectively than ever. And this way, we, we are able to accelerate the pipeline of drug discovery, potentially bringing in life-saving treatment in the minuscule amount of time. Now, this also means optimized drug candidate. So if there was a drug candidate already effective against a disease, we can use AI algorithm to optimize the drug candidate, add new functional groups and fine-tune their properties to enhance the capacity, reducing side effect and improving the overall safety profile. Now, this precision approach helps us cost, uh, reduce the cost and at the same time, time increases the chances of success in clinical trial. Remember, the biggest cost of uh, drug development is its clinical trial and not the discovery itself. And that is where uh, AI is playing a huge, 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 huge role. And of course, uh, Biotechnica has got AI in drug discovery, AI in biology internship. If you are interested, you can always join our internship and you can get yourself trained on this these uh, AI-based strategies and then you can implement it in disease biology. And who knows, you could be the billionaire researcher of tomorrow. Now, moving ahead to the next um, research area which we are tracking today is very interesting and that is popping a, not a pill, popping exactly a machine kind of a thing which can, so it's a device, ingestible device, which can help us target the delivery to a particular organ or a particular uh, system. Uh, for example, we could have an mRNA uh, device which will, uh, you know, deliver the payload mRNA to a particular part of the uh, body. So MIT researchers actually, in, in recent research we saw, MIT research in collaboration with other institutions have received a significant 65.6 million grant uh, for Advanced Research Project Agency for Health, and uh, they are developing a new ingestible device. Now, this in, uh, innovative de device could be used to treat diabetes, obesity, and various other conditions by oral delivery of mRNA. So basically, we are not popping a pill, we are popping in a device. The ingestible devices offers a revolutionary approach to targeted treatment delivery by encapsulating therapeutic agents such as mRNA. These devices can release their payload at a specific location within the body, enhancing efficacy and minimize potential side effects. Imagine that if there is a kidney stone and we could just take the drug right there and deliver the drug and then the kidney stone uh, goes away. So imagine that's a great, great, great achievement for the patient. So, of course, this will be a game changer and a lot of research we are seeing in 2024 in this direction. The next one which we are um, observing or we are following this week is the CAR team manufacturing the innovative therapy and how to meet the demand which it has created. So we, we saw uh, expansion of manufacturing for CAR T cell therapies and the race to amplify CAR T manufacturing is on with uh, companies such as Bristol Mayer Squibb and J&J &J Johnson & Johnson working towards expansion in multiple myeloma. Now, this focus on improving manufacturing capability is crucial to meet the growing demands for this new therapy. Now, the scalability of this therapy totally depends on the investor interest also that we have, we cannot deny. But CAR-T's therapy continues to demonstrate their potential, in especially in cancer. And the manufacturing process is increasingly important and biotech companies are investing in advanced technologies and facilities to ensure that they can meet the needs of growing patient population. Now, at the same time, controlling the quality of CAR T cell therapy is going to be a challenge and that is where people like you can come in and do a lot of innovation. Followed by this, we are tracking bioprinting and tissue engineering this week. So we saw complex tissue structures being formed last week. We had a paper published on this. So development in bioprinting is in enabling us now to create complex tissue structures and that could potentially lead to fabrication of bio-artificial organs. Now, this technology holds immense promise for 
addressing organ shortages and providing personalized solutions for patients in the need of transplants. Now, we will also see uh, this happening for the burn wound victim. So many people get burned by mistake or by accident. And now you can use bioprinting to practically apply and heal the wounds. So you will have a handheld bioprinter that can apply layers of skin tissue directly on the wounds. And this innovative approach will not only accelerate the healing process, but also reduce the risk of infections and scarring, improving the outcome. Now, obviously, followed by this, we can always say that because burns are so local and so specific, because my burn may be different than the next person. So personalized tissue engineering is the future of regenerative medicine. And of course, um, we are definitely looking at some great uh, innovations and additions over here. Now, followed by that, we always have talked about stem cell innovations. So the, the regenerative potential of stem cells is going to be the game changer. We are seeing diverse stem cells types come entering the experiments. And now that we have CRISPR-based gene editing, we will be able to enhance the therapeutic potential of stem cells by precisely modifying the genetic makeup of these cells. Researchers can create more and more effective and targeted treatments for wide range of diseases and conditions. So stem cells hold a great promise for us. Now, the next problem which we as humans are facing is obesity. Thanks to our lifestyle, thanks to the metabolic uh, pathways we have, now we are seeing metabolic diseases and we need more targeted therapies to target the root cause of this. So basically, we have metabolic pathways. So biotechnological interventions are targeting uh, metabolic pathways in battle against obesity. New drugs are entering the market, which is modulating the pathways, aiming to restore the metabolic balance. And of course, obesity happens because of hormonal imb imbalance also. So now biotech companies are exploring therapies that target hormonal regulators such as leptin and ghrelin to help control the appetite and improve the metabolic functions. Now, of course, in this also, we will see the personalized approach coming in because you see, my type of fat and your type of fat is different. You might have a hormonal fat, I might have a, a metabolic fat. So whatever is the reason for the fat, we will see personalized approaches being followed up and that is where biotech companies are working in 2024 and beyond. At the same time, it's very interesting to let you know that we are seeing renewed investor interest into biotech sectors, especially into CAR T cell therapy, into HIV research, Alzheimer's and rare diseases. We are seeing more companies acquiring other companies for CRISPR and there are more strategic partnerships happening where two companies from Asia and Europe or Asia and US are coming together to have a patented or a generic drug and being delivered. At the same time, the regulatory landscape is also improving. We are seeing FDA approving AI-powered drugs and for clinical trials. So that's a great win-win uh, situation here. We have talked about gene therapy advancements and rewriting the genetic codes and the blood, blood disorders in the previous videos. But imagine gene therapies uh, making strides in the treatment of blood disorders and rare genetic conditions. It's a huge boon to the human race. And we are also seeing uh, improvements in the viral vector technologies where we are enhancing the delivery and efficacy of gene therapies using viruses and viral vectors. Now, researchers are exploring how viral vectors and engineering these existing ones uh, can be used to improve the safety, specificity and therapeutic potency of viral vectors. We have always talked about AI in drug discovery, CRISPR and all the new things which is happening. My message to you is, okay, all these ha are happening and new things will keep coming up. Probably I have just covered the tip of the iceberg. But if you are late to the party, then you will keep regretting all of your life thinking it's not working, right? But if you are early to the party, if you enter the research world faster than before, then your chances of success is higher. Start at wherever you are, do whatever you can and enter whichever organization you can. So even if you can enter as a project assistant, but if you start in 2024, definitely by 2047, you will be a senior scientist or a senior uh, chief scientific officer. But if you do not believe in the field, if you do not believe in the people, then definitely nobody can help you. So these were some promising uh, research areas where you can get in. But I'm sure you might have some new areas you might, which, in which you might be interested. Put that down in the comment section so that I can make specific videos only for that. So this is all about disease biology this week. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon in the next one. Till then, keep shining. Bye-bye.